Hi, this is Mike Brown, owner of Death Wish Coffee Company. Welcome to Fueled by Deathcast. I love Java, sweet and hot. Death Wish Coffee presents Fueled by Deathcast, the world's strongest podcast. With your hosts, the incredible Jeff and the amazing D Man. Welcome, everybody, to Fueled by Deathcast. For those of you keeping track at home, this is episode 95. We switched some stuff up in the studio a little bit, a uh, little bit of new new looks, and I think, D-Man, you have a new look? This is my, my newscaster, oh. my sitting stance. Okay, you're, you're, you're very I'm, assertive. I'm ready, I'm ready to tell you something very important. All right, well, uh, this is not important, but I am the Incredible Jeff. And I am... The amazing D Man. <laughs> that's it. That's it. We'd love it if you guys followed us over on social media. It's really easy. Uh, our social media of choice is Instagram, but we Facebook and Twitter a little as well. I am at Jeff Wish Coffee. And I am at Death Wish Dust. And if you're just listening to this podcast on your favorite listening device, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Music, iHeartRadio, wherever you're finding it, we are also in video format. You can find us over on the Death Wish Coffee Company YouTube page as well as on Facebook. And no show would be complete without thanking our good friend, Brock Powell. BrockVox.com. He's the voice actor on this show and a thousand other voices in the world. Speaking of social media, go follow Brock on all the social media. It's very easy, at BrockVox. Um... Over the weekend, and we haven't really talked about this this much, D-Man, uh, the fight happened. Uh, I only bring it up because we, we did a fight companion when Conor McGregor fought um, Floyd May- May- Mayweather, and I talked about face punching a lot. Yep, that was great. And um, over the weekend, uh, Conor fought Khabib and uh, lost, yep. much to the chagrin of uh, a lot of people betting in Vegas, I'm sure, because he was the favorite by a, a lot. No, he wasn't. He wasn't? Khabib I, was? I believe Khabib was. Oh, I thought Connor li- was. By a good amount. Oh, okay. I think it was, um, uh, I think uh, Khabib was a favorite, uh, negative 150, so meaning that if you, were, oh, yeah. you to win $100, you would have to bet, bet $150. $150. So yeah. he was definitely the favorite in that. Okay, one. okay, well, he then was... Did his job for all the betters in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I, you know, I wanted to bring this up because you posted after the the, the game, I was going to say, after the, the fight on Saturday uh, because of what happened afterwards. And I really thought you had a really good perspective on it because, for those of you who don't know, after the fight happened, uh, Khabib jumped over the cage into the crowd and started a brawl in the crowd, to which the UFC panned the cameras off and did not give any you know context to. But... I just thought that that was bad form, and not only that, two of Con, uh, two of Khabib's teammates, yeah, also jumped over the cage and attacked Connor after being exhausted for a fight. One of them attacked him straight on, and then while he was busy defending himself against that guy, another guy came up behind him and and punched him in the face a couple of times. It's crazy. It was pretty gross. You know, you're talking about a dude who just competed for four rounds of the the most intense athletic performance ever. And he's he's exhausted. He's yeah, and Connor didn't get knocked out. He tapped out, which I mean, basically means he was exhausted. Like he like Khabib had him in a hole in a chokehold. You know, there was nowhere for Connor to go, so he tapped out. And it's just like, okay, your body just goes into like I'm done. Yeah, you know, it's over. And then you get yeah. you get literally jumped by <sighs> two crazy Russians. By the way, who were UFC fighters and are no longer on the UFC roster because of that? So the thing I want to point out here is that yeah, yes, we all know. Khabib's a fighter. Yeah. He's a Russian. He's yeah. a gangster. And he's going to act like a cage fighter if it's pretty much what you would expect. He's an animal. And that's kind of the consensus is that, you know, well, this is what this is what happens. But I think we're totally missing something here. And the big thing that I want to point out is that he had an opportunity to influence the world. Yes. Influence all the people following him. All the people watching him, all the Russians, his fight team, to act like an act like a king. Yeah, the way I put the it. way you put it. Yes. Yeah, because yes, he's a fighter. He's the best fighter in the world. But is he a king? And it's obviously that that he's not. Could you imagine if after the fight he picked up Connor, shook his hand, hugged him, whatever, talked it out? Hey, good fight, man. Great. Got his belt strapped on. How many people would look at that? 
Yeah. Who who would normally tend towards violence and go, you know what? This is not what I saw my idol do. Right. And even though they may not be consciously thinking that, he has now set a a string of actions. And that even the first reaction to his action is his teammates jumping the cage and then having a violent act. Well, what about all the people watching that and are in a position to act violently or nonviolently? Yeah. And the people who are influenced him will now have a tendency towards violence. But if he acted the other way, they would have even more of a tendency to act nonviolent. Yeah. To see a king act like a king and then you yourself wanting to act that way because that's a better way to act. That's the truth, you know, and I mean, like you said, so many people look up to him. He's 27-0 and 0 in the sport. I mean, Crazy. like, he is the the premier fighter that there is, you know? It's like, and that, you turn around and you just become a, a brawler in the stands. You become a thug. Yeah, you know, I mean, and I understand, you know, the adrenaline's high, but you still want to be able to carry yourself better. And, and You know, and here's the thing. It's, you know, he's talking about this guy who was Connor's teammate who he attacked in the crowd, mm. who was yelling out all sorts of shit against his religion and all shit against his family. And it's like, you're only starting to prove him right by attacking him like That's that. That's true. You know, the only way to truly prove him wrong would be to act Above it. Above it. Yeah. You know, instead you act, you're acting not only on the same level, but below it. Yeah. You know, it, it was, it was kind of a gross situation and, um, I'm sure we're going to see repercussions of it you for know a while. What? We went through months and months and months of leading up to this fight of Connor trash talking Khabib, Khabib being stoic as fuck. Right. Why, why did we, why did we go off the trails there? Why at that moment did he decide to lose his stoicism? Is that a word? Stoicism? No, well, you made it. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Stoicism and, and decide to act like an animal. This dude was obviously controlled up into that point. He won. He showed them all. What more did he have to prove? Why did he do this? I don't know. And now, now he doesn't, you know, he didn't get, his belt put on in front in front of all the people who were talking trash about him. He could have been strapped with that belt and said, this is this is how it's done. And said he's rushed out of the building. And not only that, the governor was rushed out of that building. Yeah. As soon as that happened. Yeah, it's scary. You're creating so much dangerous situations there. It's it's unbelievable. But on top of that, that governor now oversees a commission that that is now holding his purse. He's, he didn't get paid out yeah. for his fight, so now yeah. the Nevada State Athletic Commission is holding his purse and now is deciding what to do. They're going to fine him a bunch, and, and they're, they're going to, uh, they're going to uh, hold him back. What's that? Um, suspend him. Suspend him. For, yeah. I mean, we could see up a couple to a years, two maybe? Year suspension. Yeah. yeah, is what I, I would expect probably a half a million dollar fine yeah. and a two-year suspension. Well, It's like, what did that prove? You jump in, and you know you're not going to co- make contact with him. There are 20 people between you and him. Uh, yeah, I mean, that leap was pretty impressive, but you, you didn't get a hit on him. Yeah. What did you do by, by doing it? What did you prove? What did you get done? It, that's it, why that's so many bad so many bad moments. That's why I wanted you to comment a little bit on it because I, I did I did gravitate towards what you said is, is that you know we know he's an animal we know he's a great fighter we know he's a warrior he could have been a king yeah you know and he instead had the, he had that moment he had the, yeah he had the chance that nobody else gets in their entire yeah. life and he passed it up not only yeah. did he pass it up he flipped it over like a Boston cream pie hitting the floor face down it's all done with I love Boston cream pies me too. <laughs> <laughs> Secret code unlocked. Discount of death. This week, up until Wednesday, October 17th, if you use the discount code at deathwishcoffee.com, the discount code is Chris51. Jeff, spell that for us. All one word. um, C-H-R-I-S-5-1. Yeah, that's all you got to do. And that will nail you 15% off of all Death Wish coffee. Now, that's yes. one pounders. That's five pounders. That's uh, K-Cups cups and 10, 20, or 50. Anything that's Death Wish and coffee, 15% off. 15%. Chris, 51. It's great. It's a great deal. It's I mean, you always need coffee, right? I always need coffee. I, always, I actually ran out over the weekend. Oh, no. And and, and uh, it was like, do, do I pick up some coffee? And it was like... No, I, I think I ended up. I think I picked up a little bit of Kona coffee because uh, I it, wanted to switch it up. It's a okay. Bit. It's okay. There's delicious coffees out there. You, got, you don't have to just be 
but you don't have exactly. to wait with the discount code Chris51. You It will nail you 15% off of Death Wish Coffee. That'll go once again until Wednesday, October 17th. Jeff, tell us why it's Chris51. Well, because we've got Chris51 on the show. Holy shit. Yeah. Chris51, yeah. the one in our discount code? Yes. He's like a fucking celebrity. <laughs> He's a discount code. No, Chris51 is amazing. If you guys don't know who he is, he's a tattoo artist who specializes in pop and geek culture tattoos. He actually started and his entire shop Area 51 tattoo shop out in um, uh, Oregon. Uh, they started the Epic Ink show on A and E, and that ran for a full season, which was a lot of fun. And he does this huge thing now called Geekster Ink Legends, which is the largest tattoo um, tour that hits conventions in the world. Tattooer? Yeah, tattooer tour. <laughs> it's crazy, but I have some examples of some of his work right here. Wow, um, so again, ag- again, you know, super colorful, super geek and pop culture. Um, you know, pretty much anything. And he has killers that work with him as well. So they all specialize in different things. But this is all of his work. Um, he's really known for doing a lot of Simpson stuff, but he loves his horror. He loves all that kind of stuff. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles loves that. So we talk about tattooing. We talk about creating Geekster Inc. legends, and we interviewed him at a convention itself, right at Heroes and Villains Con um, recently, a couple months ago. And he's getting into the con game himself and starting his own con first ever this year in a month. It's Headbangers Con in Oregon in November. And um, it's basically, think of a normal thing like our Comic Cons, but this is all for metal music. So you can literally go to this convention, meet some of your favorite metal musicians face-to-face, get them to sign stuff, hold their guitars, see them perform, hear them on panels. It's insanity. There, there's nothing out there like this. This dude is a pioneer in many different levels, not only in the tattoo world, but now in the con world. It's, yeah. it's so cool. So we talk all about Headbangers Con. We talk about tattooing and everything in between. Uh, it was amazing to finally get Chris on this show, and we're really excited for you guys to see him. So mugs up this week's death guest, Chris51. The Fueled by Death Guest. So, let's start off with the elephant in the room. If you guys are watching and listening to this, you probably hear the din of craziness behind us. And it's because we're at a pretty kick-ass convention, Heroes and Villains. Um, And, Chris, you do this on the regular. How many conventions do you do a year? Oh, boy. You Uh, need to count them. Yeah, it's... I'd say in the last probably five years, I've done 200 Wow. Yeah, you know, give That's or take, but crazy. yeah, I do a lot. I love it. I honestly, I this is what keeps me going. That's like, awesome. Yeah. Now, as a tattoo artist, do you have a hometown shop, or are you just specifically tattooing at conventions? No, I do in uh, Springfield, Oregon, is my hometown. Yep. yep. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Can we shout out the shop? Shout it out, man. What, what is it? Area Fifty One Tattoo. There it is. There it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and <laughs> uh, but what got you into traveling around? following the circus from down to it down. is like it is just it like is. a circus right it's a it's a can i cuss on this or yeah, oh yeah yeah fucking death wish it's coffee. a fucking circus yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah dude so i don't you know i i always went to comic cons right and yeah. star trek conventions and i mean you name it i'm gonna i'm a fucking nerd that's yeah. that's why i do what i do you know yeah. i love it um I would do this shit for free. I mean, don't tell anybody that, but if I had to, <laughs> I would. on yeah, record. You know? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, but no, you know, I always went to Comic-Cons, and uh, I, I, I tattooed once at a Comic-Con in a booth, and I and I saw, like, the awe on people's faces, and I'm like, whoa. Like, no one really knows that there's, like, geeky, nerdy tattoos out there. Right. Because they weren't prevalent at that time. You know what I mean? Like, Miami Ink, I think, had just hit the air or something yep. like that, so it wasn't out there. So I was like, man... Like, people are digging this. They've never seen tattoos, and yeah. they've never seen geeky tattoos because yeah. it was kind of like a, you know, tattoos weren't really a taboo thing as much anymore, but but getting, you know, pop culture stuff was. Right. You had to get something like a skull or a demon, you know. Of course. Yeah. Um, or flowers. or So I, I kind of saw the need, and that's why I kind of created the whole Epic Ink show for A&E. Yeah. Because I was like, man, so many people are digging this, and the, the fans especially – and I saw a need, and I wanted to make a product for that need, you know. And uh, and I was I was fortunate that they let me do the show the way that I had envisioned it. Yeah. And they didn't try and change it and corrupt it and Which make it full happens. of drama and right. shit, you yeah. know. Yeah, that's always weird, and it seems so contrived. And you can tell it's right so away. contrived, dude. Yeah, it, it was really funny. I'll tell you a quick story. If, please, please. Um, it, it was cool. Like the the very first day of filming, there's three cameras around. There's twenty uh, a crew of twenty six people. 
sound guys, I mean, everything, right? Wow. And they're like, okay, so I'm at Area 51 Tattoo, and there's we have like a little island, and we all gather around, and we draw on. And the, the showrunner comes out, and like, she's like, okay, so I want you to talk about this, and then maybe lead into this, and then your favorite movie, and we're all looking at each other like, okay, sure. And we started it off with that for 10 seconds, and and within within five minutes, we're we're talking about space time travel continuum and yes. oh, and, yeah. and aliens, and fucking dinosaurs, <laughs> and how that happened, and and they let us talk for three hours, oh dude. My God. And they came in, they're like, okay, and they got a breath. They're like, all right. And the showrunner's like, okay, from now on, I am never gonna fucking tell you about what to oh, talk about because awesome. that was awesome. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. So the whole rest of the season, we got to do what and talk about whatever we wanted to. Yeah. And the only thing, I mean, and it was, it was, and I'm so proud to say that it was like real. Yeah. And like any TV, the only thing is like, you know, the audio might not have caught something, so you got to repeat it and yeah, then repeat yeah, it yeah. ten times. So it's not as, you know, it's still genuine because we said that. Yeah. Right. But it's, you know, it's after a while you're like, whoa, you know, reaction. Right. And it, it gets a little, I would say that would be the fake part, but it, at least it was still real, you know. Yeah. So that was cool. Anyways, I, I'm proud of that. And, and that TV show then kind of, I, I honestly think, helped popularize. Totally. Uh, geeky pop culture tattoos. And yeah. Totally. It made a lot of, like, closet nerds and, and guys see that, Oh my God! There's these guys on TV tattooing Ninja Turtles, Star Wars, you know, everything you could think of. Um, that's what I love. So maybe since they're doing it and there's fans doing it, maybe it's okay for me to do it. Right. And it really helped popularize that. And I'm and I'm proud to say that. That might sound a little arrogant, but I I honestly believe that that's true. That it helped. I I honestly I, and I think that you know, helps the tattoo community as a whole because it does. You know, that whole taboo thing is like. It, it's gangster, it's criminal, it's for people in jail, and it's, it's for biker gangs yeah. and yeah, military. That's it. Yeah. And now we're seeing it hit across everywhere. Now you it's hit this whole soccer tour. moms, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Soccer moms getting million yeah. dollars on their and, chest. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, and soccer moms getting uh, strawberry shortcake and Cabbage yeah. Patch Kids and cool shit that they had when they were little girls. Yeah. You know, I and, love it, dude. And we're starting to see a whole transition of the tattoo community, even down to, like, we're seeing tattoo shops even change their whole outlook. It's no longer yeah. these crusty shops. It's these really cool places to go. It's almost like some of them are even, like, spas almost for these exactly, moms to go to dude. and get tattooed. When, when I first opened my shop, I refused to hang all the biker flash on the walls and stuff. Right. And I got That's ridiculed good. in my community for it. That's The crazy. old timers were like, what do you think this is? And it's named after spaceships and sci-fi. It's, you know, it needs to be panthers or roses or right, this or that. Right. And and what what do you have? No flash on the walls? What do you just draw everything? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm a fucking artist. That's what I want to. Yeah. I don't want to do shit someone else drew. Yeah. Which yeah. is now pretty much all I do because it's cartoons. <laughs> but but that's my choice, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, but but yeah, I I act the fact that I look back and and I got ridiculed and I got threatened for that by some old timers wow. and stuff, dude. And. And I just gave him the big middle finger, and I'm like, we'll see who outlasts who. You know, your way is the old way. Right. I'm going to try it this way. Right. I got a lot of buddies and a lot of a lot of peers that, you know, are supporting me. And, and luckily, it's got me to where I am now, which is talking to you guys. Yeah. Hell yeah, Hello. And not only that, I mean, don't sell yourself short. You aren't just doing other people's work now, like cartoons and video games and stuff like that. I love it seeing the work that you do when you're taking – crazy ideas and Simpsonsizing them or oh, like yeah. or like you know like just like you know a superhero idea but it's definitely your idea so it, there that creativity is still there it's still this this industry that's growing and reimagining and reinventing itself and it's so much fun to watch for sure I appreciate that thank you man. Uh, honest, uh, honest to God and so you do a lot we've seen you we've met you at Heroes and Villains and Walker Stalker conventions and Comic Cons and that kind of stuff do you do any of the straight Tattoo conventions at all? Nah, oh, fuck no. A bunch yeah. of assholes. Uh, those things. Right? <laughs> no. it, I don't really. like them. I don't like them. I, I, I did that for a decade. Traveled around the world. Maybe maybe even 15 years. I did that because there were no there were no right. there was such thing as tattooing at comic cons. Right. Yeah, you yeah. know. And I mean, really, you had San Diego Comic Con. You had a couple little ones, but there wasn't. It wasn't really a thing. Right. Um. So I started out like everyone else, and, and I'm and I'm glad I did. Yeah. And it it showed me honestly. Tattooing at tattoo conventions showed me that 
I don't want to fucking do this anymore because yeah. I'm surrounded by a bunch of clicky yep. yeah. groups of assholes. And this guy next to this booth hates this guy, and he's talking shit, and they're fighting in the parking lot afterwards. I'm like, Jesus. I'm not like that. My friends draw on comics, you know? Yeah. yeah. We don't go fight in the back parking lot. We go to the comic book shop and grab a burger and a beer. Right. And we go geek out over the new Spider-Man issue, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, so cool. And I'm like, there's got to be another way. Yes. Yeah. And, and that actually helped propel me and motivate me to show people that there's another way. And I, and I think subconsciously that's kind of what eventually led to me coming up with my own TV show and that yeah. whole sort of thing, you know? So how did you get caught up in this convention circuit then? Uh, a- after, like after Epic Inc. aired, yeah. um, my uh, my business partner who owned a, a like a tattoo geeky app called the Geekster Inc. app. Geekster Inc., yeah. Okay, the Geeks, he owned the Geekster Inc. app and he invited me to be a part of it and a part owner of it because I at this point, I had a name, right. you know, yeah. and he kind of wanted me to be the face of the, and I got a face for radio, oh, so yeah. the social media <laughs> face of the company, you know. Um, so he kind of wanted me to do that, and that kind of grew, and these Comic-Cons started hearing about it, and they're like, well, hey, he's got this, he was on TV, he was a reality star, you want to come appear at our convention, you want to come appear at our convention. So I started by appearing at a couple conventions, you know, doing the pictures and photo ops and stuff. And Was there anybody doing this at that time, or were you not like the really. first tattooer at these conventions? I don't know if I, I dare to say I was the first, but, yeah. you know, I mean, there, there were some other uh, tattoo shops and another little tour that was doing some concert stuff, but it was real small scale. Yeah. It was small peanuts, and I don't do anything fucking small, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. no. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I started, I did a couple appearances and I did a couple panels about, you know, mixing the entertainment industry with the art culture industry of tattooing uh-huh. and that sort of thing. And then that led to uh, coming up with an idea of, you know, let's make this into a tour. Yeah. Because um, I got all these guys are like, well, you're doing these comic cons. I want to come do them. And blah, 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 that's what I'm into, you know. So the Geekster Inc. app became the Geekster Inc. Legends because I personally recruited these legends of geeky tattooing from yes. all over the world yes and i got about 80 to 100 guys i have a group i have a european team i have an australian team really? yeah i got oh. east coast west coast you know so i got all these guys that are really prominent in the pop culture tattoo community they're known you know this guy's known for doing star wars this guy's known for doing anime you know whatever the case That's may be so cool so uh, i kind of recruited these guys and handpicked them and and my whole thing was to make sure two things. One, their art was amazing, yeah, oh yeah. but they had to be good people. Yeah. Because I wasn't about to have my brand and my reputation be at stake in front of this massive platform right. of a lot of children and a lot of younger, more naive people yeah. when it comes to tattooing. Yeah. You know? um, and I wasn't about to have that at stake with having a bunch of assholes that are used to tattoo conventions coming around and fuck this and get in fights and demanding money. So my main thing was you got to be a good artist at geeky stuff and passionate about geeky stuff. Yeah. Not just, oh, you did a Star Wars tattoo five years ago. No, yeah, yeah. I want to see that shit posted every other day. Yeah. But you also have to be a good person. Yeah. You know, you got to have social skills, know how to talk to customers, get along with people. So that was the other key element. And, and that's what I did differently than, than other places was well, they just took whoever, but I was, I was a picky little bitch and I'm glad I was because I guess, now yeah. I'm like the last man standing. I got the biggest tour in the world. It's the that's biggest crazy. tattoo tour in the world wow. and it tattoos at all these comic cons and stuff. And I'm super proud of it, man. And everyone who works at the booth is proud of it. And they, they so passionate about it that it, it's like, it's all a part of us. We're a family. Yeah. yeah. So we all watch out for each other. We all promote each other. It's it's the best community ever. I love it. Well, that it makes so sense while you're here with FanFest because they got the same thing going on with that oh, I love family them. atmosphere. I mean, that's why we're here every chance we get because we're now part of this giant, awesome family that that is FanFest. And yeah. it's all about that as- atmosphere and it creates such an, an, an amazing event like this because even like the celebrities are happy yeah. because everybody's just so stoked and now you have your even your side of like even the tattooers are stoked it's, it's awesome so cool. dude and honestly like once uh so so fan fest so jackie from fan, from yep. fan fest uh she flew me out to san jose because um they, they were experimenting with some other little tattoo companies and stuff and they weren't happy because they weren't getting that the side we talked about, the customer service side and stuff, because I think it was more of what we discussed, you know? Um, So the photo ops, uh, my friends at the photo ops people here that take all their their autographs, you know, all their photos, they recommended, hey, you gotta get a hold of Chris 51, like, 
not only are they the best artists, but they're the best people. Yeah. And that was the key to them was they're all, they're, you guys know, they're the best fucking people there are in best. this industry. Hands yeah. like, down. I've yeah. done so many Comic Cons and shady promoters yep. and slime Same balls. Here, man. And yep. like, whoa. And I hooked up with them and I pretty much exclusively do Walker Stalkers and Heroes and Villains now. I got no need to go anywhere else. I could go make more money. I could go do this or that. Yeah. You know, I, I could be greedy. I don't care. Like, yeah. I am happy. And these people treat me like I'm family, you know? And awesome. Jackie flew me out to that first one and, and kind of courted me, you know? And uh, she said, this is what we got. What do you think? And, and I swear to God, every employee, it was like a family of brothers and sisters, you know, like, Hi, hugging me, high five. Everybody's me. hugs, man. It's so it's great. It's so awesome. Yeah. And half the reason you look forward to doing these events is coming back and seeing your family. Yeah, Definitely. that's. I feel you know? the same yeah, way. Like too. I'm so stoked to see all these people. Yeah. And, and Josh is such yeah. an awesome dude. I love Josh it. So I, cool. I love it. Yeah. So I mean, I, I can't speak highly enough about the heroes and villains and Walker Stalker totally. family, man. Like, and totally. I'm not ass kissing. Like, I'm genuinely would probably kiss their ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, for sure. I, I love them. I mean, I love yeah. those guys, yeah. Is it is it fun um, keeping up with the absolute, absolute insurmountable pop culture juggernaut that pop culture is now? Like, because Geekster and you guys, like, have, like you said, you have your Star Wars guys, your anime guys, and stuff like that. But we're constantly getting new fandoms. In fact, I was laughing because one of the newest things, people of the show know I'm a huge Simpsons fan. And one of the oh, newest yeah. things that just came out is Disenchanted on Netflix, which is Matt Groening's That's new what I'm property. About. Yeah. Immediately when it hit on Netflix, I'm seeing this motherfucker start posting <laughs> tattoos. <laughs> First one from, to do Elfo. From, First one to from do Elfo. From the show. Oh, so That's is that awesome. fun to like do like new I properties love that it, come dude. up and you're like, oh, I get to tattoo this now. That's what like that's what excites us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a new show comes out or like a new character on Rick and Morty. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it's like, who's the first one to do it? You know? <laughs> Some of us like like those uh the disenchanted i'll do those like i'll hook people up i just i love it i'm such a fan of it yeah. that i'll put a post out and i'll be like i want to be the first one to tattoo lucy your elfo i'll do that shit for free i don't even care just because wow. i love to do it you know that's so and cool. and that's how you know the passion of somebody and that they're in it for the right reason and i honestly think like my geek strength legends like like josh for example yeah. best star wars artist in the world he yeah. does the most star wars tattoos and the reason is, is because he's such a fan. Yep. And he loves it so much that that shows in the work. Yes. Yeah. You know, and if you're doing it just for the money, you're gonna cut corners. Yep. You're gonna you're gonna rush. But when you're doing it first for passion and love, and and then the money pays the bills when you're done. Of course. That shows, you know, yeah. and that's how all of my guys are. And if they're not like that, they're fucking gone. Yeah, you know, like I'm, I'm a stickler for that for sure. Is there a skill that you, uh, a skilled artist in something in particular that you haven't found yet that you would like to find? Hmm. Not really. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say like not really. You got every 80 to 100 guys, a couple of different countries. Yeah, and you got them all right. I got guys that can do everything. Now there, <laughs> there's guys like my, my wife. Like God bless her. She runs the whole. Geek. She runs my career. She's my oh manager. My goodness. She runs the whole Geekster Inc. thing. Wow. Like, I'll find tattoos and post them on there. She answers every message. So wow. someone will say, like, okay, we're coming to New Jersey. And we'll get 100 messages of people wanting tattoos. Right. And my wife will go through every one and, of course, pick out the Simpsons ones for me. Of you know? course, of course. <laughs> but, no, she'll go through every one. And if it's, like, a black and gray portrait, she knows the three or four guys that are the best at it and she'll see which one's going to be there wow and she'll purposely send it to that guy you know uh if it's tradition like american traditional uh you know whatever the style may be she'll match it with those guys that's so and rad. then my guys love her because of it because they're getting yeah. what exactly what they want to do yeah because you know? it's tough when you when you get a customer being like I, I mean if you're a realistic artist and, the, and a customer comes comes to you and you're like oh i want line work and it's like, yeah oh god that's so annoying exactly so that kind of sorts out all that it madness. does and, and you stay you stay like energized about it and enchanted about it you know that's so yeah rad. yeah so that's doing fun. all these conventions over the last handful of years and traveling the world and all this stuff now you're getting into the game yourself i like, am dude like, yeah this <laughs> winner you're heading the inaugural, if I said that word terribly. Uh, yeah, but um, we'll, uh, just, we'll just glaze over that, Jeff. Headbangers <laughs> con Convention. Yeah, Holy yeah. Holy crap, where did this, okay, so where did the idea come from, <laughs> and like, what is this all about? Okay, so I'm really excited about this, you yeah. guys. Like, this has never been done, you yeah. know. Um, 
I've taken my love for for the Comic Con atmosphere mm -hmm. and the platform, if you will. Yeah. You know, and it's never been done for rock and roll, heavy metal, punk. It's never been done for music, right? Yeah. So. Uh, basically, how it started was I was tattooing at Walker Stalker, uh -huh. Philly, last year, um, and uh, we were we were filming our we filmed a show about the Geekster Inc. like a traveling road show about the Geekster Inc. legends. Okay, so we were filming an episode, and one of my guys is like, "Hey, I tattoo Morgan Rose, the drummer for Seven Dust, and uh -huh. I, I have a Seven Dust tattoo. I love Seven Dust, and should I bring him in and tattoo him on the show? Because we're always looking to pull in celebrities. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, you want it, you want the show to be popular. Of course." Um, and I'm like, fuck yeah, like, <laughs> I'll get tattooed by him. Like, yeah. So I ended up, uh, my, my boy Brett uh, tattooed Morgan, and and then Morgan autographed my ankle under my tattoo. Oh, rad. R2-D2 needs to shut up out R2 there. I know, R2 is just like being so Move along, loud. R2, move <laughs> along. Um, so anyways. It's uh, the loudest R2 ever, by the way. so loud. He's like... 300 feet away. <laughs> He's so, so loud. So loud. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> so anyway, so, so Brett is tattooing me and Morgan's sitting right there autographing it and and I just like go into interview mode, fanboy mode, of and I just start asking Morgan all these questions about Seven Dust and his oh, that's so sex, cool. drugs, and rock and roll. You yeah. know what I mean? And my wife, and I'm just in awe, and my wife's noticing something else though. You know, we get on the plane and we fly home and my wife's like, you know, you've tattooed Charlie. Like, so I tattooed Charlie, the drummer for Anthrax, too. Cool. And Charlie's a huge geek. Like, and I tattoo him at con. He comes to Comic-Cons to get tattooed because he loves Comic-Cons. Oh, cool. that's cool. And, and then, you know, so she kind of, that was in the back of her mind. <clears throat> and the Morgan thing happened. We're on the plane and she's like, did you see, like, how in awe Morgan was of the con? Like, how much he loved it and how he even talked about his bandmates would love it. And, like, he needs to bring more people to these. I'm like, Yeah. Duh. You know, my wife's way smarter than me. <laughs> so she's like, well, honey, uh, with all the like celebrity clientele that you actually tattoo and are friends with from all these cons and and then Morgan having that, you know, presence in the industry and that respect in the music industry. Yeah. You have the entertainment industry. He has the music industry. Why don't you do a, a like a comic con for heavy metal? And a light bulb went off. I was like, that's never been done. I don't think it's. And I started going on the internet and researching. It's never been done. Wow. I was like, how has this never been done? Yeah. And I, I told my wife, I was like, are you sure? Because she knows, like, I'm a fucking pit bull, dude. I'm like, you yeah. tell me to do something? Like, I got blinders on. I'm going to go for it. And she knew she wasn't going to get any attention for, like, the next year of her yeah. life. She's like, I know. Just just do it. I yeah. know. You know, you got passion for metal and, and music like you do for, you know, pop culture and The Simpsons and that kind of stuff. So she's like, do it, you know. Man, that has to be like, such a huge. It. That's, that's awesome. to be such a huge undertaking. It was so huge. So I've, been, I've been working on it for like probably about ten months now by myself, dude. Goodness. Wow. Like I became a lawyer. Like I, I started <laughs> oh, yeah. writing contracts. Oh yeah. And I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. You know, yeah. I'm just copying, like taking bits and pieces of these other ones online that I'm finding, like sample templates. You know. So I, I, at all the administrative end of, of and, and then figuring out how to scout. You know locations, yep. and then figuring out talent, how to deal with talent. Luckily for me, I, I tattoo a lot of these guys. You know, right. you, I see you guys in the green room. We, I network, and I have been, and I'm friends yeah. with them. So, you know, I called like I, I, I called JDF, my boy Jason David Frank. Yeah. Um, I called uh, Butch Patrick, who's Eddie Munster. I call him Uncle Butch. <laughs> he he helped me out through a lot of stuff when I was filming, and and I started asking these guys advice, like, hey, how do, how do I approach these guys? Because you're in the green room and you hear stars, either bitch about the way things are right. or they love the way things are right. yeah. luckily at fan fest they love the way they things are yeah. so i've seen firsthand behind the scenes how to do things right yeah you know i've also been at cons where i've seen how not to do things I still. you know so first thing i did was i called james the owner of of fan fest yep and i asked i told james my idea i was like listen i don't want to ruin anything i got with you guys i i love you guys this is what i'm going to do this is what I want to do. I want your blessing. I will not do this without your blessing. I respect what you're doing too much. And I want to model it like how you guys do. That yeah. family atmosphere, fans first. And it's a non-compete. It's music. It's an entirely yeah. different yeah, thing. Totally, yeah. totally. So I'm not going to step on toes. I'm not going to do it during shows where I've, I'm obligated to you yeah. right? to appear at your shows. And he's like, what do you need help with? 
That's awesome. And he's like, my 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 family's at your disposal. You need anything, you call. Wow. You know you know who to call. You know everybody. Yeah. You know you need to order lanyards. You know who to call this person. You know you need this. You call that person. That's you know? so rad. So that was awesome. So yeah. I I leaned on his staff a little bit. And, and it kind of all kind of started falling into place, you know. Yeah, so Morgan cool. called a couple people and hey, call my boy Chris. He's doing this thing. We're doing this thing together. And uh, and I called Morgan that that day. I got home. A lot of people don't know this. That plane flight after Walker Stalker Philly, I got home and I called Morgan the next day after my wife told me to do this. And I was like, buddy, you helped inspire this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make you a minority owner. You don't have to do shit. I want you to be the the music face of the of of the what we're doing. Maybe make some phone calls to your peers so they know it's legit when I reach out to them. Right. Yeah. And that's it. And I just want you to be involved, man. Because I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for meeting you and all that. That's And he's like, awesome. fuck you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, and, and that's what I've been doing the last 10 months of my life. I literally, like, I work on Headbangers Con 14 to 16 hours a day. Wow. I do maybe a little two or three hour tattoo to pay the bills. Yeah. Yep. And, and then I... I try and sleep, sleep somewhere in between, you know, so. It's so rad, and it looks like it's going to be a ton of fun already. I mean, you got some incredible names attached to it already. Friends of the show, actually, uh, Wayne Lozniak from Hatebreed. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Uh, Aaron uh, Patrick, Aaron Bubble, Patrick, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. I forgot he was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bubbles, so dude. He's awesome. so, so cool. <laughs> dude, that guy, so he's like, I, I was explaining this to him, and what, well, honestly, what I did was I got on Instagram, because I didn't know who the fuck to contact. Yeah. How do you know? How does a, a guy in my position on the other side of the fence know where to even find talent agencies? Like, right. We deal with the same thing. Who do you yeah. look? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah. So I got on Instagram, and I messaged 500 fucking rock stars, dude. Yeah. I just messaged them. And I was like, this is what I'm doing. Morgan's involved. This this is my resume, kind of. This is yep. who I am. You know, try to add a little legitimacy to it. Yeah. And, uh, and some guy started answering back. And Aaron was one of those first guys that answered back. He's that type and of guy. And he's like, I don't really understand this. <laughs> it's like, can, can you call me? I was like, sure. So I call him. We talk for an hour about oh, Comic-Con. Yeah, yeah. The next day, we talk for another hour. Oh, yeah. Just like... We became like besties, dude. Oh, the guy yeah. is awesome. He's yeah. so awesome. And and so then now I, I just call these guys. I'm like, let me just call you and explain it. Yeah. You know, I do the Aaron Patrick method, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so so the, the idea of this con is the same as like any convention you go to. So like are you, you're going to be able to obviously meet these incredible rock stars. You guys will be there, obviously. But is yeah. there going to be like photo ops, panels, like the whole Everything. nine? Literally, I've taken, I've taken the Comic-Con platform uh -huh. especially the walker stalker heroes and villains platform at at james's blessing you know yeah. um and, I, and i've taken that proven method okay and i want to bring it to the the metal community yeah. especially a lot of the younger metal community because yeah. my thoughts are this like millennials and younger people they don't go out to music festivals anymore it's guys it's our age and older. It's true. They don't go out. They sit inside and they play video games. And when they go out, it's to a con. Yeah, it's a safe right. environment. It's it's temperate. You know, there's there's uh, there's interactive stuff. You know, people need interactive stuff today. They need instant gratification on their phones. They need all that shit. Yeah. And and that's what a con is. It's it's built for a, a younger you know a younger generation. So, my thoughts are well, if they're not coming out to our events anymore, you know, us being the metal community and, right, yeah. and enthusiasts, I'm going to, I'm going to take my love and passion and I'm going to put it on a, a platform that they understand, you know, and that would be like a comic con style yeah. platform, photo ops, panels, Q and A's, the whole deal. Interactive booths, any, you know. Any jamming? Yeah, involved? that's what I, any, I can't any, not think yeah, that there like, has is to it be gonna something be like, there. Is there going to be a super group created that, from I know, this right? convention? It's, it's all I can think about. <laughs> I hope so. I really do hope so because th that in the end would be awesome, right? Oh, my right? God. Like, it would be crazy. So, no, but honestly, like, I have a panel stage, and it'll be in the, you know, in the autograph area. So, while you're waiting in lines, you know, you hear the live panels. Yeah. Oh, and that's there's, smart. Uh, you know, so you don't miss anything. Yeah. And, and you know, I'll do a few panels, and then I, I've reached out to a couple guys, uh, like Nathan Hunt from Shaman's Harvest. Yep. I was like, bro, I was I listened to him on Octane, right? And I heard him do this cover of, of Teen Spirit, and then it went into Losing My Religion. Oh, so cool. And I was oh. like, I got chills. I'm like, yeah. holy fuck, I got that guy coming to my con. Like, <laughs> so that cool. was amazing. So I, I called him up. I'm like, bro, 
I just heard this unplug thing you did on Octane. Like, I need you to do that on the panel stage because it's not rigged for a heavy metal well, show. No, of course, yeah, but yeah. if you stand up there with a solo acoustic guitar, I'm like, bro, I'll, I'll pay you. Like, just give me three songs. Like, yeah. he's like, you don't have to pay me. I'll do it. That's so. It's so like, rad. oh my god. So then I was like, light bulb, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. So I, I talked to a couple more guys. I got the School of Rock involved. So oh, they're cool. the best. The kids are coming and they're, they're gonna the learn like. Maybe like a hate breed song. Oh, They're gonna so learn bad. some metal songs to play right oh. in front of the guys that wrote the songs, you know? That oh, is so rad. We saw them perform at Riot Fest. A They're so years awesome, ago. They're dude. So awesome. So man. yeah, so I am doing stuff like that. Um, but then I have after the con, instead of an after party, I have an after concert. Oh, perfect. And that's where you go to the 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 venue a mile down the street, which is like a, a concert venue. Yeah. You know, holds a thousand people, and and that's where I have my you know, mosh pits and live bands yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. Um, so that way I could kind of combine both. Yeah. And the people don't have to go to the concert. You know, they can buy separate individual tickets or they can get the cheaper package to do everything. Yeah. You know, so I, I wanted there to be options for people like that. That's so, so cool. And yeah. tickets are available now. I'm going to put the link right here in the show and in the, the liner notes of the show. But just for our listeners out there, what are the dates and where is it? So it's uh, November 10th and 11th in Portland, Oregon. There it is. Yep. I love um, Portland. Man. Yeah. It's Portland's so awesome. Cool there. It's so chill. People are asking me, like, well, why are you doing it in Portland? But, well, first of all, I'm, I'm self-funding this. So <laughs> yeah. I'm broke as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to do it close to home because yeah. I got to literally drive the equipment a couple hours. Yeah. So, you know, and, and that's the first thing. Um, but Portland also, you guys have been to Portland. You know, Portland is very accepting of new things. Yep. Yes. Portland's accepting of fucking anything. Yeah, it doesn't sure. matter, dude. For sure. Um, that's what he invented, like, keep Portland weird. Like, that whole thing started yep. in Portland, you know. Um, it's my home. I love it. And what a better place to do something that is risky yeah. and edgy yeah. and new. Yeah. And if anyone's going to accept it, it's Portland. If it doesn't work in Portland, it's not going to fucking work. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm starting it in Portland. Um, like I said, I'm I'm self-funding this, and uh, you know the only way I'm doing it is is I I've got sponsors on board, you yep. know, uh, you know Jack Daniels and Fireball oh, and the, the cool. liquor companies, uh, they jumped on board because awesome. they've been looking for a way to reach this new platform. Of course, they can't advertise at a Comic Con to kids, right? But they're like, this is metal, this is perfect, right? On this, so. You know, I got, yeah, so I got sponsors on board, and that's how I'm able to do this with that sponsorship money. And it's, that's awesome. I'm making it stretch real thin and yeah, go a long yeah. way, you know. Um, but the nice thing about that is, since I'm self funding it, I got no one to answer to, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I can do whatever the fuck I want to yeah. do, man. <laughs> so like, cool. I got no bosses, I got no corporate investors that I got to run shit by. Like, nope. I pulled my own liquor license. Nice. Wow. So the hotels, not the where we're doing it, isn't even in charge. I'm in charge of my own alcohol sales. So good. Everything, dude. So good. So it's gonna be a fucking party. Yeah, man. Like it's gonna be fun, man. And that and like and that's how I'm selling it to a lot of of the musicians that are coming. Yeah. I'm like, listen, guys, I can't afford to pay you a lot. Right. Morgan and I are asking you to believe in what we're doing. Yep. Kind of asking you for a favor. I'll pay your way. It won't cost you nothing. And, and, and just believe in this and see the bigger picture yeah. of what this could mean, not only for you, but for the music industry as a whole. Yeah. This could change, like Comic-Cons change the way comic books and, and all these Marvel movies we have, these blockbuster movies, that's because of Comic-Cons, yep, totally. dude. You know? So this could have that impact, and I'm not arrogant enough to, to sit here and say it's going to change the way, but it, has, it, could, it can. You got a shot. It yeah, has the potential, yeah. you know what I mean? We wish you could nothing for the best because we really believe that this could be something that could, could change that. And I'm glad that you brought that up because that is the story of Comic-Con. New York Comic-Con started out in the basement of the New York Library yeah. in the 70s, and 40 people went, you know, and now it's one of the biggest things in the world yeah. you know, because it changed the game and this could be do the exact it brought it to the mainstream music. and yeah. if there's anything rock and roll needs it's to be mainstream again to get yeah. rid of yeah. so much shit music yeah. that's it's out there suffering a little bit yeah. right now so Dude, like when, this could be really great you know what helped inspire me uh, just a side note here i all my kids were in the car and my kids have been going to rock concerts since they were like four years old yeah. like i shove it down their throats of course. and like you're gonna appreciate this mm -hmm. you know um and, and what got me was uh, I brought something up about, um, oh, hey, they're offering a music class. Like, who wants to play the guitar? Who wants to play the drums? And they look at me like, no. And I was like, like I was weird to say it. I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, 
Well, how many, okay, how many of your guys' friends play electric guitar or play drums? And they're like, no, dad, that's not cool. I'm like, what? What? How is that not cool? Oh, and I'm like, so I have a son in it's elementary, terrible. a son in middle, and a daughter in high school. Mm -hmm. So all, all schools are covered. So I was like, wait a minute, I got to research this. So I asked all of them, do you have any friends that play in bands, like in their garage, right. rock and roll band? Do you have any? No. Ugh. That's weird. What are you talking about? I'm like, so oh, I got to do something about yeah. this, dude. Yeah. I got to do something about this. So that, in conjunction with you know the Morgan thing and my wife's idea, that helped really fuel the fire for this yeah, as a awesome. way to try and reach because they don't know what they're missing, man. Yeah, yeah, they spend so all goddamn day on Fortnite, and it, it's it's cool, <laughs> you know. But there's music you hear in the back of these video games too that's pretty badass sometimes. Yes, like you yeah. could be playing that music if you if you don't have the intellect. You know, to, to build the video game. Yeah. Right. You know, there's other things you get, and, and they they just don't know what they're missing. And I yeah. want I want the youth to see what we saw when we were kids, yes. when we bought tapes and CDs yes. and albums and stuff, and and to feel that rush of seeing a mosh pit in front of them, or feeling that heavy guitar or a yeah. drum solo. Like they don't know what they're missing, man. Like I want to bring this back to them and and give it a shot. You know, yep. just just kids just. Give it a chance. I guarantee you, you're gonna like it. Yeah. You know, so that's what I'm trying to do. That also, you know. That's right. So let's say Headbangers Con first year, smashing fucking success. Mm -hmm. Everything that you want to happen happens, and then more. Where do you take it? I'm already got three planned for 2019. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. I've done. I've done location. Never, <laughs> never not go big. I don't sleep, man. <laughs> yeah. Like no, I got. I did look how. I did location scouting in Orlando. Uh, before we were, we did the Walker Stalker Orlando. Yep, I flew yep. in a day early so I could see some venues and stuff wow. like that. I've done location scouting in uh, Sacramento, San Jose area. Okay. Um, so yeah, I got. I'm doing three in 2019, and I hope to double in size the year after. You know. Excellent. So, yeah, it's. I'm not stopping, man. That's, that's awesome. Like I don't care if I got to take out loans, put a third mortgage on my house, whatever. Yeah. Like if you don't follow your passion then what happens? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. And nothing's the worst thing that can happen. It's you the know? truth. Like, it's the truth. And yeah. that, that brings us to the question that we always ask of our guests on this show. And I think you kind of just answered it, but I want it, I want a little bit more. Through it all, through tattooing, through now you're a con promoter, now and, uh -huh. and you're a lawyer, and you're everything. <laughs> and even through just your, your love of nerddom, what fuels you to keep going? What fuels you to keep getting up every day and kicking ass and doing all this shit? The passion, honestly. Yeah. My kids and the passion, I would say that. You know, I want to leave a legacy for my kids. Yep. I want my kids to see that, and it has no, however cheesy this sounds, I want my kids to see that you can accomplish whatever the fuck you want to accomplish. You don't have to be the smartest, the biggest, the fastest, the richest. You don't. You just have to outwork everyone else out there. Yes. Yeah. And if you can prove that you can outwork them and outlast them, then you'll be on top, you know? And that's I've true. always preached that to my kids. And so that's one thing that drives me is to show them, to leave them this legacy and show them that, God, kids, if I can do this, like, I, I dropped out of college. Like, I, you know, I fucked around a lot. I, yeah. If I can do this, Amen. then you can do this, you know? Yeah. So that really fuels me. And then, honestly, just the love of, you know, the, the headbangers con the love of metal the love of music you yeah. know like i can't tattoo if i'm not listening to rock and roll i cannot physically do it i can't take a shower if i'm not listening to music or get dressed in the morning i can't be on my computer without music i'm like what's wrong what, what oh it's quiet like yeah. you know yeah and and same goes for pop culture you know i i cannot draw and do art if it's not pop culture art wow you know i yeah. can't do it anymore i just yeah. can't like uh, everything like I, I it's just a natural attraction I think yeah. you know and and that's what fuels you because that attraction never stops it only yeah. grows yeah. it only grows more and more and more and you just feed the need and then you become a collector and you get the toys and then, then there's new toys out and it's just like it never ends and I, I love that it never ends because it keeps you motivated you know yeah that's and, excellent well one more time for Headbangers Con we're gonna put that link in the show but for our listeners and viewers, what is the best way to follow you specifically, social media wise? Do you have a website or, do, or is it better for social media? Like what's the best way to yeah, see what you're social doing? Social media, you know what? I, I love social media. Mm -hmm. 
because I love being social. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's what it's all about. So if you message me, I will message you back. Right. Ask me uh, any question. <laughs> no, I will. I yeah. do. I do. I, and I enjoy it. Yeah. You know, people comment on my stuff. I fucking comment right back. Thank you. It means a lot. I appreciate it. Every single comment. You go look at my pages, dude. Awesome. And, and I enjoy it. And, I, and I, if someone's going to take the time to comment or message me, I will take the time to comment and message them back. So that's a great uh, mentality. So all you out there, make sure you go comment on, on all. Please do. Up right now. And, you know, ask me anything. <laughs> it could be about tattooing. It could be about the Simpsons. I am pretty much a Simpsons expert. Awesome. You know, it could be about. Uh, you do need to have a Simpsons on. off. <laughs> oh, we will have a Simpsons on. That sounds fun. That sounds, it sounds fun. very kinky, but fun yeah, yeah, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Get <laughs> out of it, though. I don't even want to be there. <laughs> that's funny, dude. Oh man. Yeah. So yeah, Chris Fifty One. Yep. Uh, yeah. Really. Easy. Instagram and spelt out. If I have to, Chris Fifty One spelt out. Everything else is Chris and the number five one. And I know. Oh, Headbangers Con has its own Instagram. Headbangers as well. Con has yep. its own. Yeah, Headbangers yep. Con. That's it. Yeah, I'll put great that in man. Here too. Man, awesome. I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your day to talk Dude, to this us. This was awesome, it guys. Was a lot yeah, of fun. Thank you so much. Man. Excellent. I appreciate it, you guys. Hell yeah. Thank awesome. you. Stay metal, everybody. Cheers. This has been Fueled by Deathcast, a Deathwish Coffee Company podcast production. Thanks for listening.